You are a veteran of the war, a marine, but unfortunately, because of the war, you lost your eyesight. You live alone with your beloved daughter, but in one night, three criminals enter the house to take the thing you love most. Hey guys, this is Afraid, and you are watching Don't Breathe 2. Let's get into it. In the middle of the day, in the town of Detroit, a house is catching fire, and in the middle of the street, there is a little girl walking and crying. A little girl with very peculiar hair, she has a strand of white hair. The little girl's name is Phoenix, and she lived in the house that caught fire. She lived with her mother and father, but unfortunately, both of them were drug addicts who produced various illegal substances. We don't know anything about them, but still, eight years go by, and the little girl is all grown up now. During the afternoon, 11-year-old Phoenix is learning to cope in dangerous situations. In fact, Norman Nordstrom found her eight years ago on the street, full of smoke and tears. He adopted her and cared for her those years, and is now teaching her how to defend herself. The little girl does not yet know that Norman is not her father, and she does not remember her own parents very well. Norman is protecting her, perhaps too much so. Phoenix would like to get out in the city to see new things, but Norman is afraid because he lost his daughter in a car accident some time ago. As Norman checks on Phoenix's assignments, Hernandez, Norman's only connection to society, arrives. Hernandez succeeds in convincing Norman to let Phoenix go into the city, although with a bit of a struggle. While they're in the car, Phoenix starts singing a little ditty. Phoenix tells Hernandez that she heard it from her mother. So, Hernandez decides to take Phoenix to visit the house where she lived eight years ago, where Phoenix's mother had died. After arriving in town, Phoenix stopped to play in the park. She would love to join a group of children, but doesn't know if she will be accepted. The evening is coming, and Phoenix needs to get home. But first, she needs to go to the bathroom. But suddenly, as she was washing her hands, a man looked at her from behind and started talking to her. The man didn't want to let her go, but luckily, the dog came to help her. Phoenix got into the car, and that man, along with his driver, started following them. Phoenix arrives home as Norman was chopping wood. In the evening, when Hernandez had to go home, she encountered a car blocking her way. Behind the wheel was the man who talked to Phoenix in the bathroom. His name was Raylan. Hernandez got out of the car and asked to move the car. Raylan noticed that Hernandez served the country and had a gun, so he told her that he would move the car soon. But the moment she was about to overtake him, a guy popped up and started strangling Hernandez, after which he started hitting her severely with a hammer. In the meantime, Norman enters Phoenix's room to give her homework for the next month. The little girl tells him that she would like to go to school with the other kids because she feels lonely. Norman, however, is too afraid to leave her alone because he doesn't want to lose a daughter again. Meanwhile, outside, the dog hears something strange and goes to check it out. In the room, Phoenix was looking at the shelter sheet for the kids in the small town. She was lonely in that place. You know how curious and adventurous kids are. In the meantime, Norman went to fill the dog's bowl, but noticed it was still full. By the time he returned to the house, two men from Raylan's group had entered the house. Not seeing them, Norman went outside to look for the dog. The odd men were looking for the little girl. Phoenix heard footsteps, but thought it was Norman. When she noticed it was a stranger, she hid under the bed. After the man entered, he lifted the bed, but Phoenix was already under the closet. You can tell she was well trained by Norman. Phoenix set an alarm, and after throwing it to distract the stranger, she left the room but another man was coming up the stairs. Having no choice, she immediately turned off the light and hid. She was holding on with her hands, after which she fell to the floor silently like a ninja. As she was about to run outside, a third man went to the door, and Phoenix continued to hide. In the meantime, Norman was looking for the dog, and thanks to his keen nose, he smelled the dog. Unfortunately, Norman found him dead. In the wound, Norman found a bullet and immediately realized what was going on. In the meantime, Phoenix was about to run through the back door, but a bullet grazed her head. A member of the criminal gang stopped her and stood with his back to the door, but from behind it came Norman's hands that started to strangle him hard. At that point, the girl immediately ran to the basement to hide in a container. She locked herself inside so that the stranger who was following her could not catch her. Meanwhile, Norman was gluing his wounds together, literally. He was spreading glue to stop the blood. In the meantime, a gang member noticed that blood was coming out of the garage and decided to check it out. He walked into the garage and noticed the blood stains and glue on the ground. As he walked around the car, Norman caught him from behind. Jim Bob, a gang member, heard his friend's screams in the garage and went to check it out. He found him on the ground with his mouth and nose glued shut. 
he couldn't breathe, and Jim Bob punched a hole in his cheek. After that, he took a piece of glass and opened his mouth. In the meantime, Norman had hidden in a basement and heard the water running in the pipes. It was the water that was filling the container in which Phoenix was hiding. Norman immediately realizes where the water is flowing and goes to the basement to stop Duke, the guy filling the container. Duke is informed that Norman had entered the basement and began threatening him that he would insert an electricity cable into the water and kill Phoenix. Norman comes out of the dark and Duke notices a knife and wants to take it. But when he took a step, it caused a small noise that made Norman realize where he was. The two started to fight and Norman was about to strangle him, but Duke managed to break free and took the knife in his hand. In the process, the container was filling up, but luckily, Norman managed to find the cable and pulled it out. As Duke was approaching with the knife in hand, a canister was expanding gas in the basement. After hiding behind a table, Norman threw the cord to the ground and caused an explosion that killed Duke. The container had already filled up, and Phoenix had lost consciousness. Norman was injured and tired, but nevertheless, he managed to push the container full of water and save the little girl. In the meantime, Raylan had arrived and found Duke dead in the basement. Norman and Phoenix went out into the covered garden, but were quickly found by the gang. The strangers put Norman down and captured the little girl. Raylan took the girl by the hand and showed her that he had a patch of white hair exactly like her. All this time, Raylan was Phoenix's father. Only after eight years, he decided to look for her. Before leaving, Raylan orders to kill Norman, but the latter manages to escape. While one of them was taking Phoenix away, she took a pitchfork and hit his foot. The angry guy starts to follow Phoenix, but is hit by Norman until his face is smashed to pieces. The others hear the noises in the covered garden and start to go check it out, but only find Jared dead on the ground. In the meantime, Norman had gone into the house with the little girl to get a gun. When they were about to enter the attic, Phoenix started to question Norman about everything, but they were interrupted by Raylan's dog. The girl hid in a room, and Norman went up to the attic, but the dog managed to go up as well. While Phoenix was trying to escape through the window, Norman pointed the gun at the dog, but couldn't shoot. Once outside, Phoenix is captured by Raul, a gang member. After putting the girl in the car, Raylan set Norman's house on fire, not caring that his dog was also inside. Despite this, Norman manages to escape, also freeing the dog. The next day, Phoenix wakes up in a different house. Raylan begins to tell her everything. He also told her that his name was actually Tara. The little girl told him that she wanted to leave, and Raylan apparently has no intentions of stopping her. As she is leaving, she meets some people in the hallway who can tell right away that it was a drug house. As she was about to leave, a woman in a wheelchair approached from behind. The little girl ignored her and was about to open the door, but the woman started singing the ditty that Phoenix knew. The woman introduced herself as her mother and was thrilled at the sight of her daughter. After hugging her, the woman showed Phoenix her pictures and told her many things about her. Suddenly, the woman began coughing and spitting up blood. Phoenix asked her if she was sick, and the woman told her that because of the substances she was cooking in the basement of the previous house, she had become seriously ill. Her mother told her that she was going to die because she was doing drugs. Uh, because the toxic gases from the substances she was cooking were killing her internally. The woman was about to burst into tears, and all of a sudden, she told Phoenix that she needed a healthy heart. This unstable woman literally wanted to take her daughter's heart to continue producing drugs. Phoenix immediately noticed that a pill was dissolving in the juice he had been drinking also noticed two beds that would be used for the operation. Soon after, the pill took effect and Phoenix fell asleep. In the meantime, Norman was recovering and Raylan's dog was no longer attacking him. Near the road, Norman finds Hernandez's car and his dead body inside it. He took a machete with him and began to follow the dog towards his home, which was Raylan's house. In the meantime, the surgery was about to begin and Phoenix woke up. Although the probability that everything had gone well was low, nothing could stop the two addicts. Not having the right tools, the surgeon had to remove Phoenix's heart while she was alive. In the meantime, Raul frets, not agreeing with what is happening. The surgery was about to begin, but suddenly, the electricity went off. Raylan orders Jim Bob to go check it out. Jim, as he was about to turn the power back on, is hit by Norman. Jim knocks Norman down with a hammer, but the latter manages to stop his hand and inserts a bell into his throat. Jim walks to get the gun. Norman anticipates him and headshot. Above, Raylan and the others hear Jim's screams. Raylan orders everyone to go and stop Norman, but he didn't understand one thing. How did Norman find him? At that instant, Raylan's dog came inside. Everything became clear. 
all the gang had arrived in the basement, and they found Jim's body on the ground, along with Norman, looking dead. As soon as they entered the water, Norman felt the wave caused by the criminals' footsteps, and in a second and a half, put three of them down. Only Raul remained alive, but as you already know, he didn't want the little girl to be killed, so he let Norman go. While the little girl was being taken away, Norman managed to kill the surgeon by piercing his chest. After that, gas canisters began to fill the room with gas. Norman manages to hit Raylan, and the latter starts firing randomly, shooting his wife. While Norman was fighting with Raylan, the wheelchair began to go towards an empty pool. Phoenix had been tied to her mother with handcuffs and was holding her weight with her feet. Phoenix took the machete and began to cut the woman's hand to free herself, but failed and fell down with her. In the meantime, Raylan seemingly appears to break free, but Norman grabs him by the head and gouges out his eyes and leaves him for dead. A badly injured Norman confirms to Phoenix that his father was telling the truth. He confesses to his crimes, including murder and rape, and tells her to flee to safety. Raylan appears and stabs Norman, after which he is stabbed to death by Phoenix. A little girl leaves and heads to a children's home she had seen earlier. She approaches a group of children playing and introduces herself as Phoenix. A brief scene midway through the credits shows Raylan's dog approaching Norman's seemingly dead body. The scene ends when the camera focuses on the dog licking Norman's fingers, suggesting that he may still be alive. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then find out what happened to a group of environmentalists in a tribe full of cannibals.